pleasure of interviewing uh, Lou Jix Gurdon and uh, hope we can have some fun in this interview. It's been a long time we were supposed to do this, but we finally got to do it. So how's everything going, Lou? Everything's really fine, Jeff, and uh, thanks for having me. Okay, so Lou, everyone wants to know. Um, they know you got this fantastic voice. You just want to know how you got started. Okay, uh, as you know, I was born in Barbados, West Indies, and I went to school with a, with a, with a nice friend of mine. His name is Desmond Weeks. And uh, the, we sang to school and from school, and basically that's how it got started. So whose idea it was to form the Llewellyn Trio? Okay. Uh, I would say, uh, again, uh, myself and Desmond, because it was the two of us, but um, uh, my name is also Llewellyn. Everybody knows me as Jake's or Lou, but my first name is Llewellyn and uh, Desmond. And there was another Llewellyn, Zora, as, as we call him. So, but his last name was Drayton. So it was uh, Lou, Drayton, and we called Desmond the third guy. So it was the Lou Drayton three. I remember hearing you guys singing on the radio and it was always a pleasure to hear local groups as the cream of the crop at that time. You know. What was your first show in Barbados? I, 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 you know, it's been so long. I would think though that um, we used to sing on the street corner, 2nd uh, uh, Avenue, uh, Nurse Land, and I, I want to say that uh, our first shows might have been at the YMCA, uh, you know, they would do uh, monthly shows, Al and Mark, and, uh, and uh, that's how the Draytons, uh, 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 myself and Fall got started. It wasn't the Draytons then, it was um, the Starlighters then. So from there, um, you branch off into your own, you become a, a, a solo act. If you will, uh, not really. Uh, again, uh, myself and Fall, we, we, we kept going. Uh, and, and we were looking at uh, you know artists, uh, duo artists, two singers, Sam and Dave. We would hear Sam and Dave. We would always also hear the Blues Busters. So uh, my uh, Fall and myself, that's where we kind of you know tried to get going with the, the Blues Busters and stuff like that. Sam Cooke uh, uh, would. We would uh, duet songs by Sam Cooke and stuff. And then, then that's when Zara came into the picture. But you were always the lead singer in the group. Or... Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to. I, I think we all could sing, but for some reason, uh, my voice kind of caught on or whatever. And, uh, and, and, and that's what really happened. In other words, you were the dominant voice in the group. Oh, okay, I, I, I would go with that. <laughs> I would go with that. Um, I remember your first uh, solo record, which was Love of a Lifetime. Yes. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what it was. And then after that, the flip side was uh, What About You? Or uh, do I have it wrong? Uh, uh, you're right. Uh, with no flip side. Uh, I recorded a song, um, a bandit, uh, Rudolph Wave, his real name. Um, we entered the first and only JC's competition in Barbados at Kensington Oval and uh, Rudolph, I want to call him Bennett because it's like uh, he's my buddy so I think I could do that yeah. and he took me and made sure the keys was right and how I transitioned from bridges to, to verses and stuff and we won, I won. Wow. I didn't know that so I'm learning yeah, quite yeah, a bit so. <laughs> right now. So. <laughs> It's uh, good to know that. And after that, I think then you ventured overseas, or as I say, you emigrated. Well, uh, we, we, we still, we still, uh, we still uh, getting ahead. Uh, after uh, Love of a Lifetime, yeah. uh, we then uh, put that group together, I thought, called the Starlighters, with uh, two or three other guys, and we started doing like uh, Blue Waters meeting uh, um, Mike Wilkinson, and all the good guys, Veer Gibson, Veer Gibson, and all the good, you know, good musicians in Barbados. But I think it could have been Peter Cole or somebody, or D David Cole, somebody heard about me and approached my mother. My mother, I was kind of a 
crazy kind of guy growing up. And um, so they approached my mother and said, we would like for Jigs to sing in uh, the Blue Rhythm Combo. And that's how that happened. Yeah, I guess I did jump ahead. I remember you were actually a, a BRC um, alumni, if you will, yes. like uh, myself. Yes. And uh, what was your next step after the uh, Rhythm Combo? Well, there's some things too that we should mention about Rhythm Combo. We traveled uh, to America. We did uh, uh, the Police uh, Benevolent Association, uh, that big dance years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, What About You uh, became a number one hit in the West Indies, Guyana all through the West Indies, and uh, we went to Guyana to do some shows and, uh, and, and stuff like that, Trinidad and all around. As you know, Blue Rhythm Combo, uh, pretty good band at that time. Yeah. Which I was uh, fortunate to become a member of because it was the talk of the town Certainly. at the time, you know, when I decided to become a professional uh, musician locally. And uh, obviously, you know, your parents always tell you, oh, you know, security, you can't do that. But, like, when you have the talent to do something yeah. and you're driven to do it, you have to follow your heart. So, so uh, most, most musicians, the island tends to get too small for you. And you really can do as much or you realize that in order to hone your skills further, you have to leave home. Right. Okay. Mine was, um, my sister had migrated to... Uh, Ottawa, Canada, and uh, and my mother and and her made a pact to come back and get her brothers, you know, uh, so that we could also have a chance, uh, you know, in North America. And Edward, who's my brother, I don't know if you ever met him. You probably know my brother also. And uh, he refused because he was like a, a mama's kind of guy. He suffered uh, with asthma. I did also, and. Uh, he said, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in Barbados. I, I love Barbados, which I do love Barbados yeah. also. But when it came to me, they just said, uh, well, you're next, uh, Jake's. Yeah. And I, I said, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> and I, I, I took off to Ottawa, Canada. Yeah, a uh, good thing because uh, sometimes the regrets that you make is often uh, the ones that are, you know, the ones that will actually propel you to Success, if you will. But it's a good thing you said yes because we would have never had have had a uh, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after after right. you know after a whole uh, bunch of stuff, uh, you know, trying to record and trying to meet the right people, I, I did end up with uh, talk to me. Right. You know, and, uh, turned out pretty good. And uh, yeah. but the music again, it, it, it was a double-edged sword. Right. It, it's good, but the music was. Ever changing, right? Forever changing, and, and the music changed like almost instantly after my first album right. with the rap. And all the guys came in with that rap, and, and it kind of slowed up myself and a whole bunch of artists now. Yeah. But full circle, if you think about Talk to Me today, if you put it on today in a, on a, in a CD player or on a turntable, the minute you hear the first note, you realize that. Music still has so much essence into it, and the fact that uh, it's a good product, good products uh, never die. I mean, you got to backtrack to, to put this all together. I I met some guys who had a group called the Invitations. Uh, they were always in Europe working, and they lost their lead singer. And uh, I was working at the 521 Club. Uh, Gene Golston, who owned the 521 Club, took a liking to me, and I was there almost every weekend. And uh, uh, during the course of one week, uh, I met a guy called Gary Gant who said, Lou, I heard about you and uh, I heard that you're a hell of a singer. And as a matter of fact, I heard you last night, last Saturday night, and, and rah, 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 you, you know, it worked out real good. So he said, um, we have uh, a gentleman by the name of Joe Diamond who wants to record us. And at this juncture, we have no lead singer. Would you like to be our lead singer? I looked around. I said, yeah, I, I'll try that, I'll try that. Uh, if it would get me closer to what I was thinking of, you know, being a recording artist, which I already was, but I mean, in America. And the names that he mentioned that were interested in signing the group and the invitations was Polydor at that time, one of the big record companies. So I said, I'll go. And um, they had written uh, some songs. Uh, the song was Say the Girl's Crazy. And we did a do-over of 
and Jerry Butler's Free Your Precious. And Santa Claus Crazy was number one. I'm so glad that Basically, across the country. And we worked with um, all the artists that I, that I would listen to at Carrington's Village, you know, trying to listen to uh, I'm on stage with Bobby Bowman, Man Adams, and, 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 and people would say, yeah, who's that guy? Where are you from? And I'd say, Barbados. And I'd say, from where? You're from Barbados, from down south, so they sing it like that. But uh, that's how uh, the, the, the American side of things got started.